Did you ever lament, I'm just not that creative? <laughs> I know, me too. But I think I can help you with that, just like I've helped hundreds of undergraduate and graduate college students. Anyone else a linear, left-brained thinker besides me? For years, I just resigned myself to the fact that I just wasn't as creative as some other people I knew. But then one day, as a professor in the entrepreneurship department in a large university, my boss asked me to teach the course on creativity for entrepreneurs. I had to look around to make sure he was talking to me. But you know what they say, if you really want to learn something, you should teach it. So I really prepared for this class. Uh, since creativity didn't seem to me my default setting, and as I devoured the books and the techniques and practiced the exercises, one day the light bulb came on and I realized, wait a minute, I can be creative because I discovered there are techniques and processes that my linear brain just loves. Now sometimes my brain still wants to tell me, Kyle, you're just not a creative guy. And I have to override that thought and get into that creative mindset deliberately. And I'll show you how to do that. Now you've signed up for a webinar in a few days where I'll show you one of my favorite creativity techniques that can generate 99 times more ideas than you currently have about a particular topic. I'll also show you a clear example of why getting the right answer can be an obstacle in your creativity and problem solving. But today, I want to give you a short overview of five elements we need in order to start being creative. This comes from a presentation that comedian John Cleese did talking about creativity. John Cleese, uh, you may know as an actor, comedian, known for Monty Python's Flying Circus, uh, Monty Python and the Holy Grail, Faulty Towers, A Fish Called Wanda. <laughs> My favorite comedy sketch of his is the Ministry of Silly Walks sketch. Search YouTube for that video for a taste of his humor. According to John Cleese, and I agree, we need five things, five things to be creative. Space, time, time, confidence, and Dan Quayle. <laughs> Let me explain. For space, we need a separate space to work on generating ideas. I don't think I've ever heard someone say, I need to come up with some creative ideas for a marketing campaign. I'm going back to my desk because that's where I have my most creative ideas. But you do hear people talk about getting good ideas when they go, when they go for a walk, when they go work out, when they go take a shower, when they go for a bike ride, when they go to the coffee shop when they uh, go to their third place, right? It's not work, it's not home, but that third place. So, where is that space for you? If you don't have one, you may wanna create one. After space is time. We need to dedicate some uninterrupted time to work on being creative. So schedule it, write it in your calendar. From 10 to 11.30 on Tuesday, I'm just going to work on this issue. Uh, and it should be at least an hour to get into that creative groove. Uh, up to an hour and a half, maybe two hours. Now, scheduling four or eight hours probably doesn't work very well. You're going to get distracted and it's just hard to block that much time. So instead, block out two or three 90 minute time blocks to work on that creativity. So we have space, time, and then time again. That's not a mistake, time is listed twice. After we schedule that time, then we need to use all of that allotted time. If you schedule 90 minutes and have a good idea after 40 minutes, don't stop. Use the remainder of that time to come up, come up with even more ideas. John Cleese talked about working with his counterparts in writing a comedy. He said, while others may have been more talented, he very often came up with what they all thought were better ideas because he put in more time. For example, if his deadline was five o'clock and he came up with a pretty good idea at four o'clock, he would keep working until five, often coming up with an even better idea. When other writers might say, that one's good enough, I'm gonna stop here. So schedule that time and then use all of that allotted time. Next is confidence, the confidence to play with an idea without the fear of being wrong. Look at kids playing. When they pretend to be a ballerina or a pirate, 
They don't tell each other, no, that's not how you do it, watch me. No, they just go with it wherever that play takes them. And if we're too worried about being wrong or looking foolish or being embarrassed, we lose that element of play and we lose that permission to see where that idea leads. As we'll see in the webinar, a silly, even ridiculous idea may not be adopted, but it may well lead to a breakthrough idea that is feasible. But that breakthrough idea never would have emerged if we hadn't gone through that ridiculous idea first. So confidence. Last is Dan Quayle. <laughs> if you remember, Dan Quayle was an American vice president in the early 90s. And for some reason, comedians liked to make fun of Dan Quayle. So we're talking about humor. Uh, humor, of course, is also an aspect of play. Have fun. Just because we're considering a serious topic doesn't mean we can't have fun with it. This is the idea stage. Nothing is permanent yet. So take those rabbit trails. See where the goofy ideas lead you. Other people have already thought of the easy ideas that make sense. So go exploring in the world of ideas. Those are the five elements, space, time, time, confidence, and Dan Quayle or humor. I hope you'll find that space and schedule some time very soon to practice some creativity. And be sure and join us for the webinar for that 99X creativity technique. I do have one more short bonus session before then. Watch for the short case study about one of my students changing his mindset to creatively solve a real world problem. Talk to you soon.